Hi, I welcome you all to today's lesson in science on the topic farming systems. So this is a continuation on what we've been learning so far and today we'll be continuing or we'll be looking at the rest of the farming system. So our objective for today's lesson is to know the various farming systems that exist like what we've been doing previously. So the farming system we'll be looking at today the first one is mixed cropping so what is mixed cropping mixed cropping is a type of farming system where two or more crops are grown on the same piece of land at the same time now in mixed cropping like the name suggests it means that two or more different crops are grown together on the same piece of land okay so you can actually have cassava and pepper being grown on the same piece of land and have cassava pepper tomatoes and garden eggs on the same piece of land okay so that is the meaning of mixed cropping different crops grown on the same piece of land now mixed cropping is predominantly found in Ghana especially in rural communities it's not common I mean in the urban areas and other parts of the world but in Ghana it's usually practiced mixed cropping is usually practiced in Ghana now let's look at some advantages of mixed cropping so for mixed cropping the farmer is assured of food all year round since different crops are harvested at different times because they are different crops the farmer is assured of different type of food if the farmer produce or plants cassava pepper and tomatoes you know that the farmer has these produ products or this farming goods at the end of the day after harvesting but if it was just a single type of crop then the farmer just has one another advantage is that nutrients in the soil are used effectively so the nutrients in the soil are used very well because different crops grow on it. So some crops might not use all the nutrients but others may use all. So the nutrients are used very well, effectively. Also, legumes cultivated provide nitrogen to enrich the soil and at the same time control erosion. So the legumes that are cultivated like beans, peas, when they are cultivated on the soil they provide nitrogen to the soil and then they also control erosion income generated from the sale of farm produce is regular so meaning that the farmer does not lose once you, put, you are able to have like tomatoes cassava probably onion farm and then you have all this thing on one farm when you harvest them a lot of people are going to buy your food pro produce because if I don't want cassava maybe I might want tomatoes or onion and I would have to come to you for those products or produce diseases and pest infest infestations are controlled so the reason why disease and pest infestations are controlled is because the plants that are grown are different so for diseases and infestation it usually okay if the plants is of one kind but now that the plants or the crops that are grown are different kinds they cannot be transmitted from one crop to the other so these are the advantages of mixed cropping mixed cropping hardly has some disadvantages so let's quickly go into mixed farming now mixed farming is also a type of farming system where the farmer grows crops and rears animals on the same piece of land okay it is practiced mostly in the rural areas crops cultivated are cassava maize plantain tomatoes okra garden eggs etc animals that are reared are pigs cattle goats ducks fowl giant snails grass cutters so for mixed farming like the name suggests it means that you are doing two things at the same time you are farming for crops and you are rearing animals so that's the meaning of mixed farming 
So the farmer grows crops and rears animals on the same piece of land. Let's look at some advantages of mixed cropping. Mixed farming, sorry. So animal droppings are used as manure to fertilize the land. So in the cases where animals, I mean, defecate, these feces are used to fertilize the land. Okay, so that's one advantage. Also, the farmer gets enough food to feed his or her family. So the farmer gets enough food to feed his or her family in a sense that the farmer has foods in terms of crops and the farmer has foods in terms of animals. So the farmer can get meat and can get vegetables. Animals are provided with feed from the farm. So in mixed farming, any waste or any crop wastage can be used to feed the farm. Even if weeds have been taken up out or uprooted, they can actually be given to the animals to feed with. So nothing really goes to waste in mixed farming. The farmer can generate income at any time, either through the sale of farm produce or animal and their products, example, eggs, meats, milk. So with mixed farming, the farmer makes enough money because the farmer can sell the crops, farmer can sell the animals, the farmer can sell products from the animals like egg. There is sufficient use of labor throughout the year. So with mixed farming too, you realize that the farmer can't do all the work. So usually they get support from other workers. And so the workers do a lot of job. Okay. And the land is fully utilized or the land is fully used. So with mixed farming, the land is fully used because the animals are grazing, the plants take part of the land to grow, etc. Let's look at some of the disadvantages. So with disadvantages, animals can destroy the crops if they are allowed to roam freely. So if you are doing a mixed farming and then you allow the animals to roam freely, then they might end up chewing your crops. Okay, so that's one disadvantage. Another disadvantage is that a lot of skills and knowledge are required to be able to practice mixed farming. So with mixed farming, you have to understand a lot of things in terms of diseases that affect the animal, diseases that affect the plants, and so many. The food the animals are supposed to eat, if the animals are sick, what you are supposed to do, and the rest. And because it generates a lot of work, the farmer has no time to rest. So mixed farming is actually a very stressful type of farming system where it doesn't give the farmer time to rest. Let's look at pastoral farming. Now pastoral farming is a type of farming system where the farmer keeps farm animals like cattle and sheep and moves them from one place in search of food and water especially during the dry season animals like cattle are always moved to places that are free of church flies since these flies are their major parasites in Ghana this farming system is practiced in areas like Accra Plains Afra Plains northern region and some parts of Volta region so pastoral farming basically has to do with animals like cattle and sheep that are being moved from places to places so it's even common in the urban areas nowadays you find a lot of people with we call them headsmen so they have cattle that they take them around for them to graze and take in water okay so that's a form of pastoral farming advantages are that the farmer does not spend much in terms of feeding the animals so the feed is already there because the farmer moves the animal from place to place. You just move them to a place where there is abundance of grass and then you are done. The animals will just eat from there. Or you just move them to a place where there is water and then they drink water. So the farmer does not spend money on housing the, or in housing the animals. So the animals can live free range. 
you just need a pack to let the animals be there for them to sleep and the next time you take them rounds again so you don't really need a house or any big place to give the animal shelter let's look at some of the disadvantages so with the disadvantage the farmer loses animals to predators so let's say for instance we are doing pastoral farming in the forest and then in the forest there are wild animals you are likely to lose this your your cattle or your sheep because the wild animals may feed on them and the animals are easily stolen by thieves because there's no place to house them i mean any anybody at all can come for the animal so thieves can actually easily steal these animals also the animals are easily attacked by diseases and parasites so because they live outside no one cares for them they eat anyhow they drink any type of water they can actually be attacked by diseases and parasites the farmer can easily get killed with by wild animals that attack the farm animals so if wild animals attack the farmer the animals and the farmer is present or the farmer is around it's likely that the wild animal might attack the headsman so it's a risky job there are always confrontations between animal farmers and crop farmers so every time people actually complain about this pastoral farmers because you will find out that sometimes the animals will go and be eating someone's crop okay so the person will then be annoyed with you that your animal has always been feeding on their crop so they are confrontations okay and during the dry season farmers find it difficult to locate grasses for animals to get you know that in the dry season the grasses don't really go well so it's very difficult to find grasses for the animals to feed and even water so then it becomes a challenge during the dry season so so far we've learned mixed cropping and we've seen the advantages of mixed cropping we've seen mixed farming the advantages and disadvantages and pastoral farming advantages and disadvantages so i'd like you to go through and then be able to differentiate between the two mixed farming and mixed cropping because the differences are also clear in there all right so until we meet again I'll end my lesson here. Have a wonderful week and enjoy your week. Bye-bye.